Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. I wanted to share with you today my latest custom build, the LEGO Sega Genesis Mini, powered by the Raspberry Pi 4, using an unofficial RetroPie image, along with a customized Sega theme, and a functional cartridge. So to make this build, I'm using a RetroPower case that's designed to work with the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, but this can easily be modified to work with the Raspberry Pi 4. This case is designed to resemble the original Sega Genesis Model 1 in LEGO fashion using 336 bricks. And I will post a link to this case down below along with other RetroPower cases. To power and give life to my Sega Genesis case, I'm using the new Raspberry Pi 4. And I did get this from SeedStudio.com. They got multiple different models available. This is the 4GB model, but they do have the 2GB and 1GB RAM model as well. For a controller, I'm using a RetroBit officially licensed Sega Genesis 8-button arcade pad that's powered by USB. And I really like this controller because it's got those two extra buttons on the top, the left and right shoulder buttons. So it's got the same button layout as a Sega Saturn controller. And so far, I'm really happy with the performance of this controller. And for my custom Sega theme, what I've done is I've modified a SNES Ruckage theme to resemble the official Sega Genesis Mini. And what I did is I changed the background and a few other items, and now it gives me a nice Sega Genesis experience. And originally I did plan on sharing this modified theme to the public via some sort of download, but the original creator of this theme did ask in a disclaimer that if you make any modifications to this theme, not to share with the public. So unfortunately, I cannot share this theme. But on a more positive note, I did hear that Ruckage is working on a new RetroPie theme for Sega Genesis builds or Mega Drive builds, and that's gonna be coming here in the near future. The RetroPower case seems to be pretty good quality. The bricks stack together easily, not too tight or too loose, and the quality seems very comparable to the official LEGO blocks. Me and my son built this case together, and it did take a little while to make this case because it is 336 bricks. But even though it did take a little while to make this, we had a lot of fun building it together, and it brought back a lot of memories for me from when I played with Legos as a kid. And when you get to step 14 in the building process, that's the point where you're gonna install your Raspberry Pi board. And if you're using the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, it's gonna slide right in there without any issues. But if you're using the Raspberry Pi 4, you're gonna to have to make a slight modification to this area right here. And what the problem is, is the blocks are making contact with the AV port on the Raspberry Pi 4, allowing the board not to sit flush inside the case. And there's a couple different ways we can fix this. One way would be to use an X-Acto knife and trim just a little bit off the edge of the block that's making contact with that AV port. Another route would be to replace the four-piece block with a three-piece block. And this way it does work pretty good, but do keep in mind if you do go this route, it will make that Raspberry Pi 4 just a little bit loose inside the case with some front to back movement. But if you just use the X-Acto knife and trim just what's needed, you can keep that Raspberry Pi 4 nice and tight inside the case. I also found out that you can fit a heat sink and fan inside this case, but they do have to be somewhat low profile. That means that the fan and heat sink cannot stick up above the Raspberry Pi 4 height. Now from this point on, you're not gonna have access to your micro SD card. So what you could do, and this is what I did, is I cut a hole in the bottom of the case right here so I can access that micro SD card. And all I did is I used a small Dremel with a cutting blade and it cut right through that Lego block, no problem. Now this is definitely not required. You do not have to do this, but it might be a pain in the butt if you have to access that micro SD card later on. Now let's go ahead and continue building the case. And at this point, I'm very close to being done. We just got a couple more pieces on the top. And then it's time to build the cartridge. So here's a look at the cartridge. This is a non-functional cartridge. But after playing with this for a while, I decided I wanted to go ahead and make that cartridge functional. And we'll cover that here in just a few. And here's a look at the finished product. So my case did not come with any decals or stickers. So I decided to go ahead and put some on. And I got my Sega Genesis logo from DNA Dimension Designs and I made the cartridge label myself. So as it is right now, I can go ahead and play this and go have some fun right now. But I wanted to make my mini cartridge actually functional, so I figured out a way to make that happen. So this little mini cartridge adds a nice touch to this case, especially if you add a label. It brings back some nice nostalgic feelings. 
So why not take it a step farther and make this thing actually work? Well, kind of. So what I did is I put an SD card reader inside this. So really, it's a cartridge inside of a cartridge, if that makes any sense. To make this happen, I used a micro SD to SD card reader extension, where one end of the cable plugs into the Raspberry Pi 4, and then the other end is routed inside this cartridge. And because I already had my case done, I did have to go ahead and take this apart and reroute some of those bricks in order to make that SD cable route to the cartridge slot. And then for that cartridge slot, I did have to cut an opening so it could route to the cartridge itself. And then for the cartridge, I was able to remove some of the blocks in the middle of it so that SD card reader could be secured to the inside of it with glue. And after cleaning up and filing some of those cuts I just made, the end product ended up looking pretty nice and I have a functional cartridge. Well, sort of. And now it's time to play some games. And I do have some other mods planned for this case in the future. Uh, a couple of them are gonna be a functional power button and a red LED light. And I got some other plans as well. So this project might not be for everyone. I myself really like this case, especially with the current setup I have. I'm happy with it. And many of you may be wondering, why not just wait for the official Sega Genesis Mini that's scheduled to be released on September 19th. For myself, the answer is simple. I wanted them both, and I'm gonna get them both. I will be picking up the Sega Genesis Mini tomorrow and reviewing it as well. I'm a huge collector and a huge Sega fan, so anytime a new Sega product shows up or Sega related, I'm all about it. Okay, it is time for me to get out of here. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.